we've learned previously about the domain and range of your normal functions. And so domain, if you remember, was finding out what the x value could be, wasn't it? Whereas finding the range was finding out what the y values could be. Now, if you think back to what the inverse of a function is, which was switching from x to y, what do you think would happen to the domain if it became the inverse? Well, since we're switching from x to y, can you see how we would actually be going from the domain to the range in the inverse? So whatever values was your domain here would now become your range, wouldn't it? Because we're going from x to y. So similarly, when we're going from y to x, you're going to be going from the range of the original function and that's going to become your domain of your inverse, isn't it? So we're going from range to domain. So I want you to think about, because we're changing from x to y and y to x, essentially your domain becomes the range of the inverse and your range becomes the domain of the inverse. And I think that makes a lot of sense when you see why that is. And why we like to know this is because in a lot of questions, it will ask you about the domain and range of the inverse function. As well as in other questions, you'll be given the function with a specific domain. So only be defined for a, one, a specific domain. So we need to find the range of that to answer the question. All right, let's have a look at question 16 here. So in question 16, we've been given the function y equals 2 on x minus 3. And firstly, we want to find the domain of this original function. So remember, domain is what x can equal. So looking at this, x can equal everything except for, that's right, x can't equal to 3, can it? Because we can't have 0 as a denominator. So x can be every number except x cannot equal to 3. Now, what about the range of this function? So the range was every number that y could equal to. Now y can equal to any number except for one particular number. Now can you tell me what that might be? Well, can you see that for y to equal to 0, we would need the numerator to be 0, don't we? Now, because a numerator is specified as two, there's no way we can change that to zero. So therefore, y can never equal to zero. So our range would be y can be everything except zero. So now let's find the inverse of this function. So first thing we wanna do, change a y to x and change a x to y. And now we wanna make, that's right, y the subject. So we just cross multiply so this comes up here and that x comes down here to be the denominator. Can you see that? And now we just move the three to the other side and it becomes plus three and change this to the notation, the inverse notation. So if I have the inverse of the function, now the question asks us to find the domain of the inverse of the function. Now remember, the domain of the inverse was the range of the original, right? Which means that here we have y cannot equal to zero, so the domain of the inverse is going to be x cannot equal to zero. So essentially you're doing the same thing. You're switching the y for x, aren't you? So instead of y, I've just written x here. So similarly, to find the range of the inverse, I'm gonna look at the domain and switch that x for y. So y can't equal to three. So can you see what I've done is to find the domain, I've used the range and changed a y to an x. And to find the range, I've used the domain of the original function and change a x to a y. Great. So this is when it's asking you to find the domain and range of the inverse. Now in question 17, what we've been given here is a function, but only limited to a specific domain, hasn't it? So we have y equals to half x plus one, which we've graphed on this graph over here, but only between four and negative four. So we're only going from four to negative four. 
So let's state the range of the original function. How are we going to do that? Well, you can see that it's always increasing. So the range is going to go from when x equals to 4 to when x equals to negative 4. Is so what we need to do now is just substitute these values in and find out their y values. So we want to find this y value and that y value. So substituting 4, let's substitute 4 into it first. So y will equal to half times 4, which is just 2 plus 1, which should just give us 3, right? And substituting in negative 4, that gives us negative 2 plus 1 equals to negative 1. So I've worked out that this value is 3 and this value is negative 1. So therefore our range is going to go from negative 1 to 3. Okay, let's find the inverse of this function. So switching my x for y and my y for x. Now I'm going to rearrange it. So move 1 to the other side. Multiply everything by 2. So remember everything there. So it becomes 2x minus 2. Now this isn't your complete answer, is it? Because you can see here that the function was given to us has only been defined from 4 to negative 4. So therefore the inverse of our function must also have a domain which by it's defined by. So therefore the inverse of the function is 2x minus 2 but only for x is between negative 1 and 3. And where we've gotten this from is the range that we had up here. Yeah? But instead of y, I've changed that to x because the range of the original has now become the domain of the inverse. So the most important point I want you to take from this question is when the question is given to you with a specific domain, and you want to find the inverse of the function, you must also specify for which domain it is said to be for.